Uh, Mario Bros. A saga that's been filled with pipes, parties, and galaxies. And lots and lots of Koopas. And who could forget the king of Koopas himself, Bowser. With horns atop his head, a spiked shell on his back, Bowser has been one of the most iconic and enduring video game characters of all time. But what if I told you that Bowser was more than just a Mario villain? What if I told you that there was a very real Bowser that once roamed the land down under? Meet Myelania, Australia's giant horned tortoise. The name Myelania means small roamer, and you'd be forgiven for thinking so considering it's a turtle. But one look in person would show that this animal was anything but small, with the largest species of this tortoise able to grow over 9 feet or 3 meters in length, making it one of the largest turtles to ever walk the earth. Even the smallest of Mylania weren't pint-sized either, with the newt caledonian species being the smallest, yet still measuring in at a shocking 2-3 to three feet or 70 centimeters. Not exactly your garden variety tortoise. This giant turtle is from what is now the Pacific region of Oceania, specifically Australasia, or Australia and the surrounding islands between Australia and the Indian Ocean. With multiple species of this turtle having once made these islands their stomping grounds. When it was originally discovered in the 1800s, it was thought to be a large horned lizard. It wasn't until more specimens were uncovered, especially the large shells, that this animal was found to sit on an entirely different branch of the reptile family tree. However, Myelania's placement on the turtle family tree is a bit of a conundrum. You see, Myelania is part of a large family of fairly spiky turtles called Myelanians, and it's easy to distinguish the members with the large horns adorning the back of their skulls, and all sorts of different shapes and sizes. However, how they relate to other testudines, or the order containing tortoises and turtles, is where the difficult part comes in. Myelania has flip-flopped between the two current standing suborders of turtles, the Pleurodirans, the side-necked freshwater turtles, and the Cryptodirans, the more common group consisting of land tortoises, sea turtles, softshells, and snapping turtles. It's been suggested that Myelanians don't belong to either group, but are a third stem group with a lot more basal or ancestral traits, with members dating back all the way to the age of the dinosaurs, millions of years before Myelania's time. Wherever Myelania sits on the testudine family tree, this genus of turtle itself has its own unique adaptations that make it truly unique. Notably, the characteristic horns atop its head. While the usage of these horns remain a mystery, it can be asserted that they were likely for intraspecific competition. They could have also been used in passive defense, sitting on the top of the head and acting as a sort of barbed barrier against predators. That being said, the horns weren't without their inconveniences, as the most baffling element of all comes into play when you consider that the horns and sheer size of Myelania's skull prevented these animals from retracting their heads into their massive shells, the main defensive measure for most tortoises and turtles. Then again, considering Myelania was an herbivore, Myelania's head wouldn't have spent too much time tucked in its shell anyway. The horns atop of Myelania's head weren't the only thing spiky about this turtle. While many of the adaptations of Myelania make them stand out, ironically, many of these very same traits make these turtles very similar to animals that are totally unrelated. Specifically, the evolution of a spike-covered club at the tip of their tails. It's an adaptation that would have provided these turtles a fairly defensive tool in life. After all, what better way to keep a predator at bay than a spiked tail? Interestingly enough, it's an adaptation it shares with other armored animals throughout our natural history, such as stegosaurs and chylosaurs and glimptodonts. This is a phenomenon known as convergent evolution, a common phenomenon 
where different animals of unrelated groups evolve similar characteristics. For Myelania, this doesn't stop at the tail either, with Myelania's horns being eerily similar in shape to the squamosals of an ankylosaur. Like Myelania, it's thought that these animals use their spikes, clubs, and armor to protect themselves from predators, or to defend themselves when competition got a bit too physical. As the old saying goes, however, sometimes similarities can be only skin deep. In 2018, the classic club was found to not have the same adaptations found in tail clubbed animals for swinging, and likely acted as more passive defense rather than an active weapon. To beat the nail further, Myelania wasn't exactly built like these other animals. Even when compared to modern land tortoises, it was incredibly different from any terrestrial tortoise either. In fact, Myelania might not have been terrestrial at all. While Myelania is often interpreted as a giant terrestrial tortoise, a study in 2018 might have shaken the idea to its very core. This particular study focused on the ecology of the species Myelania platyceps, and found that this particular turtle's anatomy actually had more in common with those of aquatic species of turtles including the structure of the limbs that suggests that Myelania had more in common with bottom walkers like snapping turtles, while also sharing the characteristic spiky adornments prevalent in many aquatic turtles as a whole, even having the same arrangement of plastrons or plates in their shells. In addition, the authors also noted that land tortoises typically don't have long tails. In fact, they often have quite tiny tails especially compared to the longer tails of many aquatic and semi-aquatic counterparts. These adaptations indicate a turtle that was much more at home in the water than dry land, more so than the drier outback especially, and the locations where these animals were found provide additional support, with myelania often being found in areas associated with lagoons and subaqueous environments that were around at the time. However, a study released the following year discussed the paleogeography of myelanians that noted that these animals possessed the same grazing adaptations of terrestrial tortoises, including flexible neck vertebrae, strong limbs for hauling their bodies, and strong olfactories, providing myelania with impressive senses of smell. It's also important to note that myelania and its kin are fairly basal turtles with the spikes and long tails being an ancestral condition of testudines as a whole, with primitive turtles like Proganochelys having these similar traits. And it may just be that Myelanians could have simply inherited these traits when splitting off from other turtles and tortoises millions of years ago. Perhaps the answer to this mystery lies at the start of where every turtle story begins, their eggs. In 2016, the description of a fascinating new discovery was unveiled for its first time. The discovery of an entire nest of myelania eggs. The clutch of 10 fossilized eggs revealed much about the animal's development, from the egg's chemical composition to even the level of gas exchanged within the egg itself. But just as importantly, were the conditions of the environments the eggs were laid in. The conditions these particular eggs were recovered from showcase clues that the eggs of Myelania platyceps were laid in fairly humid environments, with the authors noting the nesting strategy was closest to those of hingeback tortoises, an entire genus of tortoises that not only move on land, but are fantastic swimmers, often spending their time in marshes and riverbanks. Perhaps the same likely goes for Myelania sitting somewhere in between land and water, rather than being exclusive to either living space. However, Myelania's affinity for water might have been what spelled its doom. As the earth began to cool during the Pleistocene, the climate became colder and drier with the continuous expansion of glaciers in the northern hemisphere, causing global sea levels to drop, shrinking the wet marshes and lagoons that these animals would call home and yet some still endured into the Pleistocene. However, 
As the Earth began to warm towards the end of the Pleistocene, sea levels once again began to rise, and these islands began to shrink. As their habitats disappeared, Myelania populations began to whittle down bit by bit throughout the Pleistocene until they were finally gone throughout most of Australasia. However, the last of the Myelania did manage to cling on for a bit longer into the early Holocene, just a few thousand years ago, on an island that has been widely considered as a sort of lost world for many ancient lineages in the Pacific, New Caledonia. It was here the last and smallest of the Myelania would find their final refuge, surviving as recently as 3,000 years ago. Interestingly enough, mammoths in the northern hemisphere would cling on in the same way, with insular dwarfs evolving on different islands allowing them to hang on. However, Myelania poetically also went the way of the mammoth, and this last island dwarf species would fall into extinction not long after humans arrived in New Caledonia. While Myelania may no longer walk the earth or roam its shores, time hasn't made this wonderful reptile any less awe-inspiring, with its unique and mysterious traits standing as a testament to the diversity of turtles. Just don't expect it to kidnap Princess Peach anytime soon. <laughs>